The Happiness Movement Orientation tells you what the happiness movement is and how you can become a happiness leader. So what is the happiness movement? It's a paradigmatic shift that changes everything. Imagine if your default thinking about your success were not the income, were not your wealth, were not how successful you are in your career, but rather your happiness. Imagine if the default definition of success for our country, for our companies, for our society, was not economic growth and consumption and profit, but people's happiness. We can get there with the happiness movement. The basis and the origin of the happiness movement is measurements. Measurements matter. Now, why do they matter? They matter for a variety of reasons, but one of them was discovered by researchers who found that what governments measure has a direct impact on what people value. When governments use the measurements of gross domestic product, people value their personal wealth, how they look, and their status. And when governments use the measures of well-being and sustainability and happiness, people value becoming who they were really meant to be, self-actualization in positive psychology terms, in caring for each other, and in caring for the environment. When we look at positive psychology, we saw Maslow back in the 50s identify what the human needs are so that we can really understand what people need and so that they become well. And then Seligman and Csikszentmihalyi came along and really changed the focus to fostering mental wellness instead of mental illness in the entire field of psychology. When we look at systems, the country that brought about the happiness movement through measurements is Bhutan, where there they use a measurement of gross national happiness instead of gross domestic product. This was the first country to use happiness as its measure to guide policy, to guide budget, to guide all of the governmental decisions. But what about you? What can you do to become a happiness movement leader in your community? Well, one thing you can do is learn and share about the happiness movement. If you go to happycounts.org, you'll find lots of tools and resources for becoming a leader in the happiness movement. Another thing that you can do is link your own personal happiness to social change. We can take some core lessons from the origin of the mindfulness movement. Live an ethical life. This is a really simple one. It's also sometimes a difficult one to transition to. Be as loving and compassionate as you can in your life to yourself and to all other beings. Do work that's of benefit to others and to the planet that does no harm. And then be a part of something bigger than yourself and make a difference. And this is where leadership in the happiness movement comes along. So let's dive into happiness. Now I'll warn you, be prepared for radical change. Because when you start doing leadership work in the happiness movement, you will see changes in your life and changes in your perspective, revolutionary to how you live your life. Now a little bit more on the origins of the happiness movement. Back in 1776, there is a phrase that Thomas Jefferson wrote. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people were created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now there's two things about this. When Jefferson said happiness, he was talking about what we would call today flourishing or eudaimonia, the good life. That's a connection with other people. The other thing is that the term of art at that time was pursuit of property. And when Jefferson put pursuit of happiness into the United States Declaration of Independence, he did that with great intent. And the intent was to bring about what we're looking for right now in the happiness movement. And so why haven't we used happiness in the United States and in all other countries as our main measure of well-being? Simon Kuznets was the originator of what we call today gross domestic product. And he developed that metric for governments to use to help them manage their way out of economic crisis. When he did, he said, the welfare of a nation can scarcely be inferred from a measurement of national income. He wanted governments to use wider measurements of well-being and not just gross domestic product. But somehow or other, and that's a longer story, 
we're using gross domestic product in almost every country to guide our policy decisions. Now, research by Laird and Easterland has found that while gross domestic product did go up per capita since the 40s, and happiness did go up for a while, note here when there was a lot more social and economic equality, over time, people's happiness actually hasn't gone up as we see rising gross domestic product, rising economic consumption, rising economic growth. So what does that mean? If we had time, we'd pause and we would list what it is in our lives, in our community, in our country that contribute to gross domestic product, but not to our happiness. You can probably think of some crime, economic inequality, environmental degradation. Today, there's a strong trend to try to get countries to think about measuring other things besides gross domestic product and to use those measures for policy and for budgeting and for other purposes. In 2012, there was an important meeting, the 2012 UN high-level meeting, Well-Being and Happiness, Defining a New Economic Paradigm, where this resolution that invited member states to pursue the elaboration of additional measures, this is wider measures of well-being, that better capture the importance of the pursuit of happiness and well-being in development with a view to guiding their public policies, this meeting brought together the nations and said, let's find ways of using this data of developing these measures. Today, every single country of the OECD is now measuring happiness and well-being. And you can go to the OECD Better Life Index and kind of get an idea of what they mean by happiness. You can also go to the Happiness Alliance, and there you can gather the Happiness Index. And you can use this in your own life. You can take the survey and get your own self-assessment. And you can also use it to contribute to the happiness movement by using it in your community. Now, I'm going to give you a few tips. When you use the Happiness Index in your community, you're going to have some questions that are going to be asked. People are going to say, I'm already happy. Why should I take a Happiness Index? And you can let them know that when you take the Happiness Index, they get to expand their definition of well-being and happiness. And they also contribute to the system change through taking the Happiness Index and contributing to the data. You'll also get the question of, I don't want to take it. I'm afraid. I'm afraid my scores are going to be really low. And here again, you can help people to understand that they're going to get their own self-assessment. Their scores may be higher or lower, but they will be informative and helpful to them. And that also by taking the survey, they contribute to the happiness of others. And then you'll get a third question. Isn't happiness trivial? Shouldn't we be focusing on the difficult issues like climate change or environmental degradation or poverty? And here we say flat out, happiness is important. It is a purpose of life. It is a purpose of government. But everybody deserves to be happy. But happiness is actually foundational to getting us out of poverty, climate change, suffering, and other difficult issues. But actually, if we look at our happiness, we'll actually get important lessons that will help us to face the challenges of tomorrow and today, and that happy people are actually better able to face these challenges. Last year, people will ask you, can I trust it? Because there's a lot of issues around data. The Happiness Alliance's Happiness Index the data is protected. The Happiness Alliance is a nonprofit. We never sell the data. We only use it for the purposes of our mission. So join the happiness movement. Your happiness matters. What we measure is what we get. Count your happiness and take the happiness index.